there's a, there's a couple of interesting things in that interview. The first one is when you know Jake Gyllenhaal said what I loved about the script, and um, which I think is is kind of significant because okay, so Michael Bay makes unfilmed a Michael Bay generally, okay, and you know watching a Michael Bay film is like being shouted at whilst hit over the head with a stick of dynamite. Subtlety is not his no. register. That's okay. fine. You yourself pointed out this is based on a Danish film that is a nippy eighty minutes. And, and, this, and very sarky and zany and quirky. Yeah, tonally very different. Uh, this is also not to be confused. There's a Larry Cohen film called The Ambulance, and when somebody said it's a remake, I wondered originally whether they'd, they'd, they'd remade that. That's a very, very different film as well. So what this is, is, as with all Michael Bay films, it's pumped up, it's, you know, it's overblown, it's overwrought, and it is honestly overlong. It is, there's no need for this film to be the length that it is. Um... And perhaps, you know, one way of thinking of it is that it's speed in an ambulance. Um, so the setup, as we had there, is that two, two brothers, through a plot setup which is at very best perfunctory, one of them is a good guy, arrives, you know, the other guy, he says, I'm going to do a heist and you're going to come with me. Oh, all right. And the next thing they're going to do this heist, which again, as you said, goes wrong almost instantly. Yes. Almost from before. It's almost like you think getting somebody involved in a job which is happening now this second, probably not a very good mm. move. Anyway, things go badly wrong. They find themselves in a ambulance which they are driving in which there is a policeman who has been shot who the plot says to us they have to keep alive because otherwise they will be guilty of having, you know, having committed murder. And Aiza Gonzalez is, is, is the, the, the paramedic who is then effectively a hostage, who the, this hostage situation is, OK, you must keep this policeman you know, alive whilst we do what our getaway thing is. Yes, because we can't be seen as being cop killers. No. On the other hand, <laughs> as you and I said, immediately we came out, everyone else that's involved in the carnage and the car crashes and the chases and the boom crashy explosions doesn't seem to matter. So there is a fundamental plot flaw, which is, hang on, so the whole of this is happening so that he's okay, but everyone else is collateral. And when I say everyone else is collateral, I mean the amount of cars that flip upside down, burst into flames, career off bridges, go... It's the it, Blues Brothers, isn't it? Quite a, it, On quite regular basis. Yeah, and you remember the bit at the end of the Blues Brothers when the, when the fall, you know, the car falling, and it just becomes more and more ridiculous until effectively it's being dropped out of a helicopter. Well, it even has the helicopters out of which it may have been dropped. So there was something sort of quite funny about... Jake Gyllenhaal saying, well, what I really liked about the script, because you go, oh, yeah, there was a script. That's right. There are also some probably decent performances in there, although it's very hard to tell, because as with all Michael Bay's films, it's so shouty and overstated that it's very hard to tell. Also worth pointing out that this is unfilmed of Michael Bay, but it is also unfilmed of uh, Alex Vanover, who is the Drone Racing League world champion who is flying the FPV drone. FPV? With first person viewer drone. OK. With which Michael Bay has become completely infatuated. That so is very true. There is some on-set footage of the guy, you know, you have the headset on, like the virtual reality headset, and you fly the drone and you see what the drone is seeing. So that's why first person viewer. And this guy is an amazing drone pilot. Absolutely astonishing. But it's like... In the, it's like some, Michael Bay's gone, that's great, that's cool, let's use that for the whole film. Every five minutes. Regardless of what's happening. So the drone comes in, it flies up, it goes down, it goes swirly, it goes down, it goes around. Some people walk down a corridor, the drone flies the other way over their heads. Somebody picks their nose, the drone flies round and goes up their nostrils. Some two people having a conversation, the drone goes in the trousers and out the thing. And you're going, OK, I get that the drone's a neat thing, but, you know, uh, could you just maybe back it off a little bit because is it necessary to have every single shot doing that? It's like a football... I know this won't make any sense to you, but when a footballer is showboating and just showing off for the sake of it, it does feel like that. Why did you do that fancy little flip in the corner and then drop down the wall? Just drop down the wall. Yeah, yeah. Well, here's the weird thing, is that the other thing is that in the past I have criticised Michael Bay for having this kind of, you know, pornographic action sensibility that there was a lot of Michael Bay's previous movies, particularly in the case of Transformers, that had that kind of leering, you know, upskirt aesthetic. This is a kind of upbuilding aesthetic. It's like, whoa, look at that. That's look safer. at that, and then look at the bridge on that, and look at the thing on that. But it is still the whole Michael Bay kind of, whoa! Which, 
fine if you were doing that for 80 minutes. You could probably get away with it. And I have seen films in which the construct of a particular visual gag can be sustained for 80 minutes. I think when you're doing it over something that's, you know, two, what is it, two hours, 19, two hours, something, 20, like that, yeah. something like that, it feels longer. You need something different. The performances are, OK, well, you know, Jake Gyllenhaal does shouty and um, Abdul Mateen does moody. Angus Eyes does her, does her best to keep a straight face, even when what she's doing, I mean, there's a sequence in it in which she's performing life-saving surgery in the back of an ambulance on the telephone to a surgeon on the golf course, and but she's managing to keep a straight face. And Michael Bay is doing the Michael Bay thing, which is that everything is exploding. And when I say everything is exploding, I mean everything is exploding. Including bodily parts. It's, everything is exploding. There's also a couple of shots in it in which, I mean, it starts with the kind of, you know, the burnished sky of L.A. And the, the, the title card goes, Los Angeles. And then it goes, L.A. You go, I know. And then, Ambulance. Oh, oh that's it's in L.A. Yeah, fine. And, oh, fine. But th So now I know we are because we've gone to the L.A. River where every movie ever has been shot. And there's a bit when the ambulance is under the... And the guy says, OK, I need you to get in there really close and, you know, scare him out from under the bridge. You go, why? Oh, well, the reason why is so that I can do a ground-level shot up with the ambulance with one of the whirly copters going that way and one of the whirly copters going that way. It's nothing... There's no reason for this to happen at all, but it will look cool. Is a whirly copter the same as a helicopter? Yeah. OK, right. It's just like which is called whirly copters. So, I mean, overall, it's one of my least unfavourite Michael Bay films. Um, it's, there, are, there are things in it that are kind of fun. It's way too long. It's, you know, this plot makes absolutely no sense at all. The dialogue is either shouty or moody. Um, and it's, it's kind of, oh, Michael. Really? And it, probably in there, there is an 80-minute B picture struggling to get out. It's all right. It's your least favourite... It's my least unfavourite... My least unfavourite Michael Bay film. Yes, it is the Michael Bay film that I dislike the least. 